Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. This time it's something a little bit different. Normally I review kind of consumer electronics-y electronic stuff. You get what I'm trying to say. So this time it's something kind of auto related and this is something that I actually needed personally. So uh, unfortunately it came a little bit a little bit too late for me to personally use it. So about I would say like two weeks ago um, I noticed that one of my tires was was low, you know, gave the uh, the TPMS tire pressure monitoring system error uh, on my dash. So I took it to Costco. I had it filled, and the light went off, and I thought nothing of it. Then two days later, the same light light came on, and so I thought it was a little bit odd. So I went to Costco again to refill it and have the tire inspected. And turns out that I ran over a bolt which pierced the thread. And I guess it must have gone into the, you know, the the part that holds the air on your tire. And there was a, like a, a small pinhole leak. And it would, I, you know, if you filled it up, it that's why it took me two days to realize that it slowly leaked out. Uh, so I had to get that patched up. So in that situation, actually would have been, this would have been perfect to test. But unfortunately, uh, uh, Shockflow contacted me like shortly after I already got my tire patched. So I, I would have liked to have tested on that, but all my tires are already filled with nitrogen right now. So unfortunately I have no reason to, you know, refill them. And uh, right now it's actually pouring cats and do dogs outside. So unfortunately I can't actually easily film this outside and they want the video, you know, pretty much ASAP. So we're gonna make do with uh, testing this. I'm not gonna be able to test this unfortunately with my actual car, but I brought in my donut and good thing because it's like, flimsy like there's no air in the donut at all so i'm actually gonna to fill um the uh the spare tire that i have here and uh so that'll get me at least that if if i ever get a flat then i could just change out the tire myself or whatever and uh, this will be ready to go but anyway uh this is their model tp06 now they sell a lower end model i actually just googled this and i can't find the sales listing so this is literally a brand new product and this is actually their higher end model. I believe they have like a TPO3 and a TPO4. And this has a, a few more features. Uh, namely, this will inflate your tires faster than those two models. So here you can see, uh, it says three times as fast inflation. I'm guessing that's in relation to the lower end model. 7,800 milliamp hours, and we'll get to that in a sec. A smart touch screen, four plus N smart modes, 150 PSI max, that, that would be your maximum and uh, device power supply is included. Uh, actually, it doubles as a device power supply, rather. Uh, so this is basically a USB power bank that can also, you know, fill tires that have low tire pressure. Uh, and it can it can do, like, a completely flat tire as well, from flat to full. And I, I believe they said it takes, like, maybe five minutes, something like that, in that case, uh, which is better than nothing if you're at the side of the road and, you know, you have a, a, a flat and you have a patch kit, but no way of actually filling the tire once you patch it, then this is definitely better than nothing. So anyway, uh, as for pricing, because this is a new product and I can't find a sales page, I can't tell you exactly how much it costs. The uh, the lower end model, the TPO4, I just checked and that was $60. So I'm guessing this is between $60 and $100. But I know, yeah, as for like an emergency thing, uh, you can see here, it can uh, pump up your balls. <laughs> It can pump up your balls. Yes, yeah, that's the thing that I just said. It can uh, do bike tires, motorcycle, cars, obviously, and manual for anything else. I guess if you wanted to use this to like fill like a inflatable pool or beach balls or I don't know. But yeah, you can use this. It comes with a number of tips and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, here you can see rated power 120 watts. Uh, voltage is 11.1 .1 volts. So that means there's actually three lithium batteries in series inside. Now you might remember it, they said 7,800 milliamp hours, but I have a feeling that's if you if you add all the capacities of the batteries. But keep in mind they're in series, so you you shouldn't add the you know the milliamp hour capacity rating of a battery when they're in series. You only do that when they're in parallel. So I'm going to guess this is around like two to three thousand, maybe 2,500 milliamp hours each cell and then they're just adding them all to give you 7800 a better 
just just for the manufacturer, a better uh, rating would be to use watt hours instead of milliamp hours. It makes more sense, uh, especially if you're doing like serious cells and that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, here's the packaging. It comes with a really nice like uh, tote case thing. Throw this in you, you know your your glove box or your your trunk. And yeah, that's actually a really nice thing to include that just protects it, keeps all the cords and all the nozzles and everything inside here. I really like that. Has a manual that I already pulled out just to figure out how to use it. And yeah, it does a job. Has really nice pictures that are clear and easy to understand. And it does have like a little bit of a user interface. We'll get to that in a sec. Unit itself takes up most of the room. It's still pretty small. It's about the size of like one of my small projectors. And it does have pretty decent heft to it, so yeah. Um, we have the integrated uh, hose here, which actually is a really nice design. It just fits in, it friction fits, and then there's a outlet so that when you unravel it, you can you know set this flat on the ground and have the, the hose not kink. So that's actually really good design. I, I like that quite a bit. And yeah, we have ventilation all along the sides because this is a pump after all. And there's a motor in here. It's going to get warm as it pumps. We have an LED display and then touch buttons, which you can just barely see. But when we turn this on, you'll be able to see it a lot better. On the back side here, we have the power button. We have a uh, USB port here. And this can charge any phone uh, or device. Uh, it, it doesn't do like PD. It does uh, 5 volts at 2 amps max. So you can at least charge it faster than like the slowest charger, but it can't do any of the high, higher voltage modes. So yeah, that's kind of a little bit unfortunate. But one thing I really like is there are two charging inputs. One is uh, 12 volts, so you can plug this into your cigarette lighter, which is if, for a thing that goes in your car, that's super useful. But also you can charge it just off of a standard USB-C uh, input. And it also charges at five volts, uh, two amps, so 10 watts charging input and output. But yeah, that's that's really nice if you're not near your car, if you're at your office or whatever, you can plug this into like any, even a power bank, you can charge this off of in an emergency if you absolutely need that. Though charging might take a little while and might have to wait like half an hour for, for it to have enough charge to like pump a, a tire up. But yeah, we also have this uh, opaque window here because it doubles as like an emergency flashlight. What a great idea. So this is sort of like a really neat sort of thing. I actually like the idea of this. Uh, other than that, inside the packaging, we have all the associated cords and nozzles, and I believe there's also a fuse in here for the, uh, the charging lead. So here we have our cigarette lighter, and this is a super long cord. I'm not going to undo this. This is going to, you know, get all kinked up. But yeah, this looks like easily like 20 feet or so. So yeah, as long as your engine starts, you can actually probably just plug this straight into your car and have it pumping your tire powered off of your car battery effectively uh, while your engine idles. So that's actually really good. Uh, what is the warning here? Oh, they're just saying the tip might get hot because of how much current it'll pull. So do not touch. Okay. But yeah, and the lead is uh, polarized, so not, you can't stick it in the wrong way. That's a great idea. I like that. We have all the nozzles. We have a like a ball pump nozzle here, the needle, and we have like a, I don't know what this is specifically for. There's like an O-ring and just an orifice. And I guess this last one is like the catch-all for like, if you want to do like a pool or a balloon or whatever. <laughs> And uh, we have a spare fuse for this uh, this outlet, which undoubtedly you just unscrew this and there'll, there'll be a inline fuse there. So yeah, really thoughtful, good to have. We have two more things, actually like three more things. We have just a USB-C cable, and this is actually decently long once again, so if you wanted to use uh, like a phone charger to charge it up, uh, it'll do that. Yeah, this is probably like two to three feet it looks like. Yeah, really nice. And we have a uh, one of these like bike style adapter nozzle thingies with the uh, the latch on the back of them. So yeah, undoubtedly this is if you wanted to refill your bike tire. Like everything's really nicely made. And there is a a clamp, huh? That's interesting. Obviously with like a some sort of valve attachment to there, so that it can hold. Yeah, that's to actually hold, I guess, if whatever you have that you wanted to uh, 
wanted to pump air into that that'll just hold the nozzle in and there's a cutout that looks to be about the size of uh you know this side so i guess you could just stick that in here and just like pressure fit it don't really know exactly what that's for if anyone knows let me know but yeah probably won't need that i'm just going to fill this um so i guess all we got to do is uh i'll show you the tire and just how limp it is right now and uh we shall try to uh, pump this up i just googled because i've never actually used this spare and i didn't know what pressure to put it at google says 60 psi the markings on the tire say 60 max so i think to be safe i might put it at like 50 or 55 whatever uh anyway i'm not going to put it on my car right now it's just going in in my trunk again once i'm done with this but it is good to know that you know there's at least some air in it in an emergency i can at least put the uh put this on myself if i ever get a flat in the middle of nowhere so anyway uh let me get set up for that and i'll meet you guys uh on the floor <laughs> Okay, I had to zoom out a bit, and uh, I'm sort of kneeled over right now. But uh, this is my donut, and we have the, uh, yeah, just to show you. I mean, you normally would not be able to do this entire that was pumped up, but yeah, that, that's pretty low. Uh, we have the cap right here, which I just set to the side so I don't lose it. And here we go. So turn this guy on press the power button there you can see the buttons light up uh, so this is the battery percentage that's left inside the internal battery uh, we have a switch for the light which if I switch that on you can see it's actually pretty decent so and there's also a flashing emergency red mode which is actually that's really thoughtful as well and then there's a flashing white mode and then you click it again and it goes off so yeah there is a play pause sign I guess that means start pumping and then up down so you can adjust the pressure depending on what mode we're on the person mode which means uh, that's user settable and there's a setting button to toggle so now we're in uh, basketball mode we are in bike mode we are in motorcycle mode and car mode so right now it said uh, 35 so I'm gonna bump that up to let's do 50 just to start off with so now we're at 50 PSI. So I should be able to just pull this guy out, set this flat on the ground, and uh, screw this guy in. And then we should be good to go. So I'll warn you guys, uh, I might have to turn down the volume on this segment of video. Uh, this is, I did test this, not plugged into a tire, but uh, it does get quite loud because it's a mechanical pump and it's a, a pretty small form factor. So it's going to get loud. So I'll try to do my best. I might leave it uh, full volume for a couple seconds for you guys to get a judge of how loud this will likely be in, in real use, but then I'll, I'll tone it down after that point so that I don't give you guys tinnitus or anything like that. So I guess we just hit play pause. <laughs> So that is cool. You could see um, it's what it shows you the actual current PSI. So you can keep track of it and stop it at any point just by hitting the play pause button. That's actually a really cool feature. So you can use that to measure how much PSI is in the tire. And it already has 5.5. It was uh, lower than that even. So that, that's pretty much empty. So yeah, let, let's just let it run and uh, see how long it takes roughly. So I'll just stop it here for a sec. 32 is roughly what you'd pump like a normal car tire to. So in that amount of time, that's how, if you had a, a complete flat, it would have taken to, to pump up one tire. Now it does say it has half battery left and it was full before. Uh, I actually forgot to fully charge this when I first got this. So it's whatever battery this shipped from the factory with, which I'm gonna guess it does not use up half of the 7,800. Uh, milliamp hours or whatever that equates to at the voltage in watt hours um, I, I highly doubt that it took up half this battery to just pump one tire because I, I think I remember reading uh, on their site said something like you can pump 10 tires or something like that from flat 
off of a fully charged unit. So yeah, um, I might actually have to, you know, fully charge this afterwards and see, uh, maybe empty this tire out again and do a few times just to see. But yeah, anyway, uh, so we're going to continue on, let this get up to 50 PSI. There you go. And it shuts off automatically when it hits the preset. Uh, I have to review the footage, but I think that took about like less than five minutes, definitely. And that's 250 PSI, so that's actually pretty high. And there actually is a warning on the cord that uh, it gets hot while pumping. And it is actually moderately warm because it's, you know, forcing the air through and there's like kinetic friction and whatnot. But yeah, that worked pretty good. Now I'm just going to try to undo this. Maybe it... it Looks like it expanded a little. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Just the uh, the twisty bit was a little bit tight on there. But yeah, uh, one thing that I did definitely notice was, uh, so this does have like rubber feet and we're on concrete right now, but it was like vibrating and moving itself off to the side. So yeah, this, this pump definitely does vibrate quite a bit. And so you just got to keep your hand on this pump to make sure it doesn't try to walk away. But yeah. I can't even push this in anymore. So yeah, definitely pump this up. It did it pretty quickly. It says it still has half battery life, um, but I have a feeling that actually, because I never filled it, uh, I never recharged it when I first got it. So I have a feeling that uh, maybe it wasn't at full capacity to begin with, even though it said it had four bars before. So yeah, anyway, that worked That worked a treat. Actually pretty happy with that. Let's uh, plug something in to charge. I just want to make sure that... The output charges and how to enable that i don't know if i have to go into the settings or something we'll shut this off for now put this hose back in okay so we're back at the bench uh i got my phone on me i only have what 74 percent i can't even see myself yeah i only have like 74 percent battery life so let's uh see if this will charge uh, USB upside down. It's always upside down the first time you do it. As soon as you plug in, it detects that you plugged a USB device in, and I guess it turns itself on. So let's just see. There we go. Came up. It's starting to charge. Uh, give me a sec while I check my uh, battery settings to make sure if it's fast charging or not. I, this shouldn't do fast charge. This should just do slightly faster charge than normal. So if I go into battery, so yeah, um, if you see here, it says 14 minutes till full. I, I do the thing for my flip battery because the battery isn't so great. I do the thing where I only charge it up to 85% to try to maximize the lifetime of the battery. So that's why it's saying only 14 minutes to, to charge. It's only 10% it'll charge. It won't charge up to 100%. But anyway, yeah, sorry if you couldn't really see that. But yeah, it's going, it's already 1%. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely doing the job, and uh, you can see here, cute little USB icon there. But yeah, this works a treat. Uh, this is something I would definitely use in an emergency, and uh, it was actually pretty easy to use too. So to boot, uh, I mean, I don't think I don't know if there's too much they could do about. I think the biggest biggest like issue that i have from a usability standpoint is that this vibrates like a ton and it makes a lot of noise um this is a mechanical thing so without making it too much larger there's not too much they could do to try to absorb that shock from the motor um possibly maybe use a more expensive motor that's quieter i don't know uh this is sort of a mechanical problem not an electrical one uh, so i'm not really too sure how, how they would go about making that problem better uh, works perfectly other than that. I mean, if you can withstand the, the, uh, how loud the motor is while it's pumping and, uh, how it tries to wander on you because these rubber feet, I, I get what they're trying to do, but the rubber feet didn't really help even on concrete. It just ended up vibrating up and down enough so that it just kept moving to the side there. Uh, but yeah, I don't feel, it doesn't feel particularly warm. Oops. Let's turn that off. It doesn't feel particularly warm. Um, right as soon as I pumped, uh, I made note that the, the cord, the air tube was a little bit warm, uh, but the rest of the body doesn't feel like super warm. So, uh, thermally, I, I think it's fine. That means it was able to, uh, this, the spare that I pumped that, that would be equivalent to like pumping two tires ish. 
about like to 25 to 30 psi uh, so that was uh definitely did the job so uh, one thing to note yeah it does have um you can change the unit so it's in psi i think if you press and hold this it changes to bar kpa uh, kilograms per centimeter squared and it goes back to psi so yeah it's actually a really cool thing i think uh this will one day come in handy uh, and even if I don't end up using this to pump a lot of tires, I, I like the idea that you can also charge USB devices in emergency. But anyway, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I know this was a little bit of a random one. This isn't something that I, uh, I usually review, like automotive stuff, but it's something that we all deal with. Everyone who commutes to work will eventually have to deal with the inevitability of getting like low tire pressure or a flat. And sometimes it's convenient to like go to a... Uh, if, if you have a gas station that has an air pump there or like a Costco has one, uh, that's great and all. But if you don't have that convenience and you're in the middle of nowhere, having something like this uh, can really help you out in, in a tough squeeze like that. And like I said, it's just a cherry on top of the cake being able to charge other devices as well. So, yeah. Anyway, if you are interested in this, I will have links down below uh, for the product listing of this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Okay, very quick addendum. I saw rubber feet. I thought, cool, screws must be hidden under there. And in fact, they are. There are like self-tapping plastic screws under each of the feet. Uh, but even removing those, uh, if I can do this with one hand, um, it doesn't it doesn't come apart. So there must be clips. And then if I look through, there's like a little hole right there where the, uh, the cord enters the body. I can see clips holding the top on, but... I can't for the life of me actually like physically get under there to like undo it or whatever. So I, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't want to break this or stab something, puncture it if I, you know, try to pry a little bit too hard. So unfortunately, yeah, I, I don't think this is like super easy to get into without like marring it. And I can't see where to exactly pry. So I don't know. I tried, uh, I'm just about to, to give up on I'm popping this open. Anyway, I'm just pretty much expecting a circuit board, the LED display, um, the mechanical pump, which is going to be very similar to, you know, an aquarium pump sort of things, maybe heavier duty, and then a, uh, a lithium polymer battery, something similar to like 18650s, I'm going to guess. Maybe pouch cells, I don't know, but without like breaking this to get in, I'm unfortunately not going to be able to show you guys, so darn it.